There they are. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Check that out. And we're still going too. Like, how does all this stay on the rail? Like, how does this not streamline? You know, it's wrapped around itself so many times. How does it, and I know they have a lot of streamlined derailments up here. Like it's all the time. It's a constant thing, but like this should, like you would think this was streamlined, right? What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. We're back at it with even more Run 8 Train Simulator gameplay. Today we're going to be taking this monster 15,000 plus ton grain train down to Hatchby Loop. Yes, we are taking on the mountain out west and it should be a lot of fun. We are in the G Linsua. Uh coming in at 2.7 HPT, 15,300 tons, 114 loads, zero empties. 7,549 feet long. Our configuration for today is going to be, we'll look at the train real fast, is going to be a four by three by two configuration. So should be pretty sweet. Here you see our mid-train DPU or our swing helpers, as they were called back in the day when they were manned. And then on the bottom, we got a rear DPU here. Our pushers is pretty cool configuration. I love the nose to nose configuration on uh on the rear dpu just something is kind of sharp about that it's like going against the grain because they're both pointing the wrong way but either way it should be a pretty sweet train to run all right let's go ahead and see about hopping back in the cab and uh we'll see if we can get this thing over the mountain all right so we're loaded up in the cab we're uh, just about ready to go we got a few things we need to do first we need to open up the windows so we can get some fresh air and uh hear some things let's move up on the console too i always felt like the default position is a little bit far away i kind of like to lean up on it a little bit so that's what we're going to do there uh let's get our headlight all bright our rear light is already on uh we got full independent our brakes are drawn down to 75 reversers and forward that's all good as well too uh, let's go ahead and change our radio real fast, channel 14. Because we will start auto up in just a second here. There we go. We got that. Uh, yeah, I think we're set. Let's get auto going. Engage auto all routes. See if he does okay on this. And yeah, all right. Let's go ahead and open the throttle. Get some sand going. Release the brakes. We are on a hill right here, so it's going to take a little bit of finagling to get us moving, but hopefully not too bad. There we go. Not too bad. She can do it. She can do it. She can absolutely do it, even at 15,300 tons. Oh, we don't need to do that, though. Keep going. Keep going. She's wanting to slow up. All right, let's get some wipers going too. Uh, a little bit more. It's kind of raining pretty good. This is just do on. Uh, we've got an approach and we've got traffic up ahead of us. Uh, we're starting this off. I forgot to mention, we're starting this off at uh, Monolith. We're heading north towards Summit. Summit's going to be right up here. Let's do Shift F8 so we can show some locations. All right, now I think we're good. Yeah, it's uh, it's a little bit of a grade here. It's not horrible, it's 0.7. It's not bad, considering the downhill side of Tehachapi is what, 2% uh, give or take, maybe a hair over two. 2.1, 2.3, something like that. As I said before, I'm not familiar with Western railroading. This is completely, completely uh, foreign to me. So we're going to do the best we can. All right, we had an approach back there on the distant to whatever that is. Maybe that's the distant to summit. I don't know uh, exactly what signal that is, but all right, let's go ahead and kill the sand. I don't think we're going to need that. And what do we got? We've got to stop up there. Get a little bit more throttle. Uh, DPU of course is not split. I'm not splitting it. I'm not getting fancy with it. Uh, I haven't done it enough in a long, long time to uh, know what I'm doing. Uh, a lot of you guys will know uh, that are familiar with Run 8, like uh, Tatchby is the OG route. That is the original route uh, when the game was first released way back when. So we're doing it OG style. But uh, we're not getting fancy with it. We're really just not. It's completely different kind of railroading out west, is it not? I mean, really it is. I mean, you know, back east, um, 
we have grades. There's grades there. You know, 1% on the fits max pretty much along the entire route. I mean, it gets a hair over 1% in certain areas, but for the most part, it's 1%. UP detector, milepost 363.8. Track 2. But the crazy thing about it is, like, uh, the HPT is so different. Like, this is what? 2.7, which to me, thinking in southeast terms, like, this is a ton of horsepower but it's barely enough to get over the mountain on this train. You know, I think 2.4 is like, what, the bare minimum? But uh, 2.7 seems like a lot, whereas back east, like we were running a hair under two the other day. Um, gosh, we've had some as low as a 0.7 on the coal train, you know? <laughs> it's like this slow boat to China. But 2.4 on this train, going up and over the mountain would be the slow, point, uh, the slow boat to China as well too, so. It, it's kind of weird how, uh, you know, it sounds like a lot of HPT over here, but it's really not. It's just barely, you just need that much to get over the grades. Now the question is, this signal up here that we're coming up on, is it positive or is it permissive? Her doesn't know. Is it, does it have a number plate on it? It looks like it has a number plate, right? I think it does. So that should be permissive for us. Shouldn't be a problem. We'll keep easing on up there. Man, there's a lot of traffic on the road next to it. It's like, it's a lot. Man. It, it is, uh, it's 1400, so, or 1600, sorry, 1600. So yeah, I guess it's evening traffic, maybe. All right, yeah, I will look at that signal some more. Are you positive? Or are you permissive? It looks like it's permissive. I see a headlight up ahead of us too. I see a headlight up there. So that's the, uh, that should be the, the bar rig. Yeah, there's going to be a lot going on with this one today, guys. It could be chaos on the mountain. Who thinks? Like, it could very well be chaos on the mountain. Oh, that's cool. I don't think, uh, I don't think it was like this originally right here. The siding at Summit, I think they changed that and they put in like the old SP style, why ever they did that where the siding used to swing out and then go back in. Maybe they had a signal in there in between or something. All right, yeah, okay, that's the number plate. So I guess that's the distant to, um, the hatchet be. We got hand throw crossovers here at Summit. Like I said this is where they used to cut the uh, definitely the swing helpers, if not all the helpers in and out right here. All right, there we go. We got an approach anyway, so it's not a big deal. It's, it's a moot point. We can keep on keeping. Yeah, he's easing long up there. Yeah, so the next signal is most definitely going to be a positive signal for us. We have to stop for that one. As we get more into this, uh, we'll have to do more. We'll, I'll experiment with the DPU. I've done it in the past. It's just, it's been so long since I've messed with DPU. It really is just uh, very, very foreign to me. All right, here comes the uh, Richmond Auto Rack train. Nice rainy day here in California. In California. All right. Let's just ease on up here. Pretty cool following behind the train though. Really, really cool. On a double main, you can do that. You can do a lot more with it. I don't know if I really care for that horn or not. We may do something a little different here. And eh, not that. Yeah, that one right there. I like that. I like that. Sweet. Also, had someone uh, leave me. I've actually had a few people. I had someone comment a while back about the font. They gave me the link to the font to fix this uh, for the radio and stuff. And then I had someone else message me 
Uh, when I got the original comment for the video, I just lost track of it. Like sometimes comments get buried or forget where they're at. But uh, I finally got that fixed. So uh, thank you guys for uh, suggesting uh, that font and the fix for that. It definitely helps a lot. All right, here comes the Rick uh, Mim, right? Rick Mim. Nice blowing for horn or blowing for the crossing. That's pretty cool. I'm like super distracted right now. If you guys haven't noticed, it's like it's it's really it's kind of hard to do commentary and do some of this at the same time when you're kind of focusing and. All right, there we go. Let's kill the bell. We'll keep easing up here to this signal. Hopefully, we'll get light fairly soon. Um, so basically, what we're gonna do, I, you know, I'm no expert on this. Uh, I, I don't know all the nuances and the ins and outs, but I can get you from point A to point B safely and in one piece. So basically what we're going to do to go over the mountain is we're going to start out in dynamics. We're going to ride those. We're going to keep gradually increasing them to hold the train back. And then once we get up to about B5 and B6, I'm going to start thinking about setting the air up. We're going to grab 10 pounds. Uh, and then we're going to come out of the dynamics at least a little bit, right? We'll come out of them a little bit and we'll see what the train does and then we'll start adding dynamics back in and then we'll kind of balance it out for going down the mountain at 23. That's basically how I like to do it. Uh, I haven't run a train this heavy on the mountain in ages so I couldn't tell you exactly what it's going to do. Uh, you know, with a 10 pound set, we may need more, we may need 12. Uh, but I basically, I want to ride the air down and kind of use the lower end of dynamics that's basically the plan we'll see how that works out but that's the plan i know they roughly they kind of do it that way in real life um like i said there's probably a lot of things that we miss or we're not doing right but we'll get from point a to point b safely i do know that be okay all right so i guess we'll hang out here we'll wait for the light and then we'll get rolling again let's go ahead and Release the independent. Do she'll get rolling. We may have to pull on her a little bit to get her moving. Let's scooch on up on the console here. Okay, there we go. Now we're moving. All right, we got a flashing yellow. I guess that's some kind of advanced approach. Like I said, I don't know. I'm, I'm running by the seat of my pants. I used to know this stuff more, but it's literally been years. It's literally been years. Um, let's come out of dynamic and let's pull on it. Just I don't know. She's gaining speed pretty fast, actually. You know what? Let's scratch that. <laughs> scratch that plan. <laughs> Never mind. We're not pulling on it. We're just going to go with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to give us a light. Uh, we gave ourselves a light. We're going to slip through here real fast and then we'll give it back to auto. I didn't like what he was doing with that. Let's give her a little bit, just a hair of dynamics. On the G Linswa. I like it. It makes me think of Ventrilo. Who used Ventrilo back in the day? Who remembers Ventrilo? Yeah, I really have to kind of concentrate on this and watch. Because things will get away from you super fast. It really just will. So we got to watch this. All right, we're through the crossover. Let's give it back to Otto. Otto, you can come back. He just took a smoke break. We're like, come back, Otto. Come back. It's okay. We'll be friends again. Yeah, I don't know why he didn't line us through there. Because it's absolutely fine absolutely fine anyway who remembers ventrilo who used ventrilo way back in the day who used to play around with the uh micros what was it microsoft sam on ventrilo where it could talk then people would go like raffle raffle copter go swah, swah, swah. 
It reminds me, every time I see the G-Lin Swa, I think about that. Used to have people do that on Ventrilo all the time, the raffle copter. There's probably a lot of you have no clue what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> How many of you do? If you know the raffle copter, let me know down in the comments, especially raffle copter on, um, on uh, Ventrilo. Probably, probably most of you are like, what in the world is he talking about? All right, let's keep easing along here. There, right, it looks like it's holding pretty good right here at B3. Oh, uh, got approach, show him the distant. I guess that's the distant to cable crossover. Of course, we can only do 23 down the mountain. 23 is such an odd number, right? I think I remember hearing a story about that. They'll, of course, if you don't know Tatchby Loop, it originally was the Santa Fe and the Southern Pacific that both ran this line. It was the Southern Pacific route, but Santa Fe somehow got trackage rights. It's been like that for ages, for eons. And um, they uh, they were trying to settle on a speed going down the mountain. One wanted, I think one wanted 25, the other one wanted 20. And so they like kind of split the difference and said 23 maybe or something like that. I think that's how that went down. I could be wrong. All right, got approach. Let's uh, let's slide over to the side a little bit there. There we go. Nice. And our next signal is going to be point nine, so we kind of got to account for that too. At least a little bit i'm still kind of testing out like how well this train stops especially going downhill i have no clue i haven't been able to kind of test the water a little bit let's go ahead and grab our air let's go ahead and take it to uh, 82 for now That should be good. All right, let's come out of dynamics a little bit. Try to balance it out. So we're going to try to balance it between the two. All right, let's get a little bit more air. And then another thing we've got going against this is the fact that I don't know how these signals lie around these curves. Like, you know, I know it's 0.5 miles away, but is it on a straightaway or is it something I have to look out for going into a curve, right? We'll see. We're going to have to pull on it a little bit here. Yeah, I think so. We're going to have to pull on it just a tad. He's wanting to squat on me. I'm trying to ease around up here to this signal here to, to not get by the stop because I'm not sure where it's at. It's raining on us. The rails are slick. Yeah, she just totally squatted on us. I should have stayed with eight on that. I, I'm really, I'm honestly, I'm kind of surprised that uh, she did squat. Uh, 15,000 tons on a, a two percent downhill with a, a 10 pound set like that's kind of surprising to me i didn't expect that yeah i totally didn't expect that all right there we go we got her moving again yeah it's okay to pull on them downhill sometimes they do that i, I know they even do that in real life like sometimes you have to there's certain spots where the train will squat on you especially if you're going super slow all right let's see what she does I'm just really antsy about looking out for that signal up here. All right, point one away. There it is, I see it now. Okay, I see it. It just kind of popped in. Yeah, the rain doesn't help with that, right? 
Well, there she be, right there, okay. All right, we'll just ease up there and kind of let her stop on her own and she'll do it. She should. Yeah, it looks like she's wanting to. Yeah, this train is, uh, it, she's kind of squatty. I'm a little surprised, honestly. She's a little bit squatty there. All right, so we got to stop here at Cable. We're waiting on another train. Dispatcher did some, I don't know. He kind of did us wrong a little bit. All right, that's good right here. Let's just go ahead and go full independent. We'll hold it right here. All right, we'll uh, we'll hang tight. We'll wait on the lights. All right, so what's going on? I had I completely misunderstood what I was looking at earlier. The Z uh, LT in NBY, whatever this is, North Bay is uh, he's a northbound. I was thinking he was a southbound for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, so yeah, we are we're meeting the Modesto Barstow uh, slop right here, and uh, the Barrick is ahead of us, and then we're at Cable. So yeah, it's it's going to work out. Our next meet is going to be the uh, Roseville West Colt Colton here. Uh, probably either uh, Rowan or Woodford or something like that will meet him. I don't know if we'll go that far. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, Barrick just got a light, so we should be able to continue on shortly. He's uh, 6,000 feet long. 2.9 HPT. Not bad. Ours is 7,500, 2.7. All right, let's go ahead and hop back in the cab. We'll get out of here. There you go, tail end of the bar, Rick. So we should be getting a light. Let's go ahead and transport back to our train. And let's see. Oh, nice. Okay. There's the other one. Uh, come on, Otto. Give us a light, dude. What's up with that? Uh, may, we may need to tone him up, actually. That is exactly why we didn't get the light back at Tatchpy. Oh, that's so cool. I love it, though. That's pretty cool. All right, come on, dude. Yeah, give us a like. That is totally why he was holding us back there, Tatchby. I wasn't thinking. Totally wasn't thinking. We should have a light here in a minute, though. There we go. All right, there's our light. We're ready to go. Get back in position here. And we'll come out of the independent. We'll, let her, we'll see if she starts rolling. We may have to pull on it. We'll see what she wants to do. Uh, maybe. Yeah, she just doesn't want to do it. Man, this is a squatty train. She really just is. She just does not want to roll. That's all right. We'll see about pulling on it. There she goes. Now she's moving. How cool would it be to have track R in this? I think that would be a lot of fun. I would like that. Maybe at some point it would have track R supports. All right, we don't need to pull on her too much. Now, I think flashing yellow is an advanced approach, right? I need to I need to pull up a list. We're, we're doing this by the seat of our pants. All right, we gotta watch it. We don't want her to get too uh, too far away from us before we go into dynamics. All right, so, uh, all right, uh, train looks good. 
All right, let's come out of that. Let's start going into uh, dynamics here. It may not take nearly as much as what I thought it would. I, I'm still kind of feeling this train out a little bit, honestly, like, and just seeing what she does, because it's kind of surprised me a little bit as far as, like, how squatty it is. All right, she's still picking up a little bit of speed. Which is fine. We want to do 23. It looks like around B3, B4 is going to hold us, maybe. Yeah, maybe B3, honestly. Like, it's just not very free rolling. Not like I thought it would be. I was really thinking we're going to have to get like 12 pound, like a 12 pound set going downhill, but we're not going to need that. Man, it's been ages since we've been through here. And I know they've made some changes to the line too. Like they connected Marcel and Waylong like they did in real life. Uh, Caliente and uh, Ilman, they did that as well. All right, we got an approach. I guess this is the distant to Marcel, maybe. Yeah, let's get a little bit more dynamic here. Just gotta watch it. It's, it's back and forth, constantly messing with the dynamics, right? Now we can come back out over here. All right, there we go. On 23. And we've got to stop in eight. Yeah, we'll just go with this. Yeah, not being terribly familiar with the route, it really takes the anxiety level up a bit, like looking out for these signals and stuff. I know a lot of you guys that run the West Coast regularly, it's like second nature. Like, it's nothing to you. But uh, it's the same for me in the Southeast, right? Like, you run it so much, it's just second nature. It's not a big deal. All right, let's start slowing her down a little bit here. Hopefully, we can uh, scope out that light before we get right up on it. All right, there's our light. We do have a stop up there. Okay, that's fine. We don't want to touch the big brake anymore. We want to ride this down all the way down to the bottom. Because if you get too much and you ha like, there's no releasing it, right? Like there's no releasing it unless you stop and tie down a whole bunch of handbrakes and then release it and recharge it and then grab some more. It's like, it's a big deal. So yeah, we, we don't want to release this. We don't want to touch the big brake. We just want to ride this out. All right, so we do have a stop up here. I'm guessing this is Marcel. Maybe, I don't know. No, it's uh, it's not. This is cable. Never mind. This is cable right here. So that was, okay. So they got a distance between cable crossover and cable, and then this is cable. All right, okay. I'm good now. I told you guys, this is so, <laughs> it's so dang foreign to me. There we go. There's our light. Okay. We bugged Otto a little bit. He said he'd tell us, uh, <laughs> you'll move when I tell you to move. He's a little snarky today. All right. So let's just kind of coast along, see what she does here. 
Yeah, we're about to pull on it again. All right, it's back out of dynamics. Sorry, right, we got to clear cable. Oh, man, there's nothing like following someone down the mountain. Holy cow. Like, easing around and looking out for all these signals just kind of sucks. And I know in today's world of PSR, you know, 15,000 tons is a drop in the bucket. You know, now they're running, you know, 1,000 car trains and 20, you know, 20 unit DPU sets or 20 DPU sets. I'm kidding. I jest. But you get what I'm saying, though. The trains have gotten so ridiculous now. You know, they've gotten so incredibly ridiculous. Like, 15,000 tons is nothing, but... Back in the day, I want to say these were the uh, the heaviest trains that uh, that went down the mountain. The big earthworms. They call them earthworms. I don't know if that's... I guess that's a real fan term, right? Like, I don't know if railroaders actually call them earthworms, but... I mean, I guess I, I kind of see it. Well, we can't see it now because we're in that curve, but... All right, let's ride this right here. Well, at least we're running on a clear. We could hold back. We could absolutely do that to give ourselves more favorable signals, but uh, we've got opposing traffic, so that could kind of hurt us too if we if we dilly dally too much. Through the tunnel. <laughs> I don't know what was that. What was the deal with the DD? <laughs> it's like track. <laughs> okay, maybe the radio was cutting out. That's cool. The uh, the highway over there on the right, that's new. That wasn't there back in the OG days, at least I don't think it was. I don't remember it being over there. All right, we got clear on, uh, I'm guessing this is the distant to Marcel, maybe. I know they're not terribly long blocks. They're, they're pretty short. Man, we're using way less dynamics than I thought we would. It's just this train is running completely different than I thought it would have. Yeah, that's kind of weird on the DD. I don't know what's up with that. That was a, that was a weird read back. All right, this should be the last tunnel for a bit. All right, so we got another advanced approach. We're still following uh, the, the slop rate. All right, so the Roseville West Colton's gonna be meeting a bar Rick at Rowan. Uh, I guess we may meet him at uh, Woodford. I'm not sure exactly how Otto's gonna plan that out. We'll just have to kind of wait and see. Wow, well, the dynamics a little bit here.
Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how this is going to pan out, but we're not. I don't know. We may be stopping it way long. I'm not sure. I can't like the track has changed. Everything has changed. And then on top of that, I'm not that familiar with it. Our next signal is 0.6 miles. I hope we didn't miss anything when I was looking at the uh, dispatcher screen earlier. I, I hopped out and looked at that trying to see what we're going to be meeting. So uh, we're running on an advanced approach, approach medium. Okay, an approach medium. All right. Always consider that like an advanced approach, but. Yeah, Spur needs to freshen up on his uh, West Coast signal aspects. I don't have a clue. Like, it's totally by the seat of our pants. And we picked a good train to do it on, too. You know, 15,000 ton grain train in the rain, getting dark, going down the mountain. You no, know, into Hatchapi. Yeah, it doesn't get any better than this. If, if you want a little pucker factor, this is the way to go. Especially when you don't know anything about it and you're trying to look out for signals and all that stuff. Now we got a DPU error. That's going to be a calm loss. That'll be okay for you. those of you that aren't familiar with the game. Yeah, you do have uh, calm losses just like they have in real life. Like everything is exactly like real life. All right, we got a clear sweets. Okay, good job. Good job. Is that a positive signal because it doesn't have a number? Yeah, it is. What? Okay, I would totally expect that to have a number plate or a P or a G or something on it, but. It's not. Interesting. All right, we should be getting fairly close to the loop, which was the whole point of this video, was going around the loop. We'll, uh, we'll get around the loop, we'll go maybe to Woodford or something like that, and then we'll call it. Oh, yeah, this is the new way. Okay, yeah, this is the new line they built. They, uh, yeah, they bypassed the tunnel and just made a cut. So this is the new double track. Wasn't like this in the old, the OG version of the game, right? The old version of the game wasn't like this at all. It had the siding at uh, Marcel, and then it had one at, uh, at Waylong. All right, there's the loop. Very cool, you can see it down there. Oh, we got a clear down there too, nice. All right, I'll take it. That is so cool coming around here like that. That is way cool, all right. We should have a crossing right up here somewhere. Let's scooch over a little bit here. All right, there's our whistle post. That's not a very uh, crossing intense route. There's very few. There's not a lot along the entire route. Whereas in the southeast, it's like you're constantly blowing the horn. All right, there we go. There's our earthworm behind us. We got back there. Uh, a few lease cars, some being uh, just plain old BN cars, and a lot of BNSF. Nice. Yeah, she's wanting to kind of squat on us a little bit.
I really, I kind of expected this train to be like a bowling ball, like just taking off on you, right? And it's just really just not. I don't know if it's because it's so long and it's the rolling resistance or or why, but it's definitely not uh, responding the way I thought it would have, which I was totally wrong on that. All right, let's see if we can watch it this way. It's pretty cool. Not goop this up. We know we got a light down at the bottom, so we're good there. What a uh, what an engineering marvel, right? It really just is. Who would have thought to loop the track like this? And this isn't the only one. There's another one too. There's uh, what is it, Williams Loop or something like that? But it's not nearly as famous as this one. We should be coming around the curve there any time now. There we go. Double check our speed. Yeah, we're hanging out at uh, 18, so we're all right on that. Let's come out of the dynamics just to here. Never been to Tatchby in real life. I've never seen it, though. I was fascinated by it as a kid. I read a lot about it. DPU should be coming up. We should probably be pretty dang close to crossing under our own DPU here. There they are. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Check that out. And we're still going too. Like, how does all this stay on the rail? Like, how does this not string line? You know, it's wrapped around itself so many times. How does it, and I know they have a lot of string line derailments up here. Like it's all the time. It's a constant thing, but like this should, like you would think this would string line, right? All right, let's hop back in. Enough rail fanning. Oh, what a dark and gloomy day. That is so cool. I've really enjoyed this. It's been a lot of fun. We'll, uh, we'll have to do some more. Like I said, I, you know, we'll venture out uh, on more things, you know, stuff that I have that I'm able to do. Yeah, I really think we could have easily gotten away with an eight pound set and just road more dynamics it's just all in what you want to do right all right no clue what this is <laughs> maybe this is an advanced approach uh i don't know approach medium okay Yeah, I definitely need to freshen up on those. I have no clue. I'm like at a complete and total loss. We'll just go until we see red. That's all right. We're just going to go a little bit further and then we're going to call it. See what our meets look like. Uh, yeah, we're going to hold the main at... Uh, no, actually, we're going in at Woodford. We got to meet. Yeah, okay. We'll make this meet at Woodford. That'll work out perfect. Then we'll end the video. It'll be good. Yeah, we're going to meet the Roseville West Colton. All right. Yeah, we can totally do that. All right, so we're coming up on uh, Woodford here. We're going to go in the siding to meet the uh, Roseville train. We are... Uh, there's not going to be a lot of spare room on this meet. Like, a, a little over a 1,000 feet. Something like that. Let's see. This is uh, 88.44. And our train is 75.40. So about 1,300 feet. All right. Let's go ahead and count it off.
yeah we'll come up here we'll ease it down to a stop and then we'll call it that'll be it for this series we won't do any more i mean we'll run more oh it stopped raining on us too go ahead and cut this off uh yeah we'll do some other stuff like i said i don't think we're just going to do these whole long continuous trips like we have in the past it's just going to be little short segments The stopping this thing has me really antsy. It just has me on the edge. I still haven't quite figured it out. Like, of course, I know how to stop it, but just like what the train is doing just kind of has me on edge. Turned out to be a pretty good meet, not too bad. Okay, so we should be about halfway in. Then we're light for them. That's a really cool AI does that. back to bright no toot no horn i i'll tell you guys right now from experience all the real life meets i had we hardly ever blew the horn at each other it was very very rare uh we were more likely to throw water bottles at each other than we were to uh to toot the horn like we we used to do that the little plastic water bottles that you'd get uh, sometimes we throw those they hit the windshield and bust you know <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, we hardly ever, uh, we hardly ever hit the horn. All right, we got a little bit slower than what I thought. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, this thing just squats so easy. We still got about 2,000 feet to pull in, too. Oh, look at there, mid-train DPU, single unit. I don't know how long this train is, but it should be fairly long. I think the, uh, the real life Roseville trains were monsters, right? They're pretty big. All right, 6,000 feet, so we got about 1,500 more. Nah, there's his bottom. Yeah, he wasn't that big. Okay. So that means we could possibly have a light out the other end, even though we're not going to take it. Yeah, there's our stop. Yeah, we do have a light. Okay, yeah, we're not going to take that. We're going to roll up here and stop in the clear. Ooh, that's a weird reflection in the windshield there. I don't know what that, that's about. Like some kind of black orb. It's like an omen, right? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Maybe we need to stop. All right, let's go ahead and give her a little independent. And come out of dynamic the rest of the way. Sweet. There we go. All right, guys. That's going to do it for this one. Hope y'all enjoyed. Love all of you. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll catch you on the rails next time. Peace.
Yeah, I don't know where we're going to meet them. We're going to be meeting them at.